Hi, I'm Paul Lefevre, the Real Software Developer Evangelist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to MySQL using Real Studio. If you don't already have MySQL installed, you're going to want to go grab it from the MySQL downloads page, which you can find right here. Uh, you just download the installer and run it. It's pretty simple, as a wizard and everything walks you right through it. Uh, it doesn't even take very long. And after you've finished, uh, you can verify that everything is running correctly by uh, launching the MySQL Workbench. And when you launch it, it comes up with this screen here and shows you the instance that was just installed on the computer. You can double click on it to connect to it. You may be prompted for the password that you gave it when you did the installation. And here you can see uh, the databases that exist on the database server by default. Um, Take note of the test one here in the middle because this is the one we're going to use uh, with the Real Studio uh, application to create our table. So it looks like we're able to connect, so everything is running perfectly fine here. So let's go jump over to Real Studio. This simple project is going to do uh, four tasks to connect you up to MySQL. Uh, first, it's going to demonstrate how you'd actually connect to the MySQL server and a particular database on the server. Uh, then it's going to create a table in that database. Uh, then it will add some data to the table, and then it will retrieve the data from the table and display it in a window. So let's take a look at the window. And you can see it's laid out pretty simply. Uh, there's four buttons here on the left. Let's make the property pane wider so you can see the names. Uh, the first one is the connect button, and this is going to connect to MySQL. The create table button will create a table uh, called team on uh, the database, the test database. Add sample data will add some data to that team table. And then show sample data will retrieve that data from the database and display it in this list box. Next to the top three buttons is a simple label that is used for displaying the status or any error messages should they occur. And back to the list box, it has four columns with a heading and the four columns match the column names of the table that we will create and their ID, name, coach, and city. And you can add those by setting the column count here, checking has heading, and then setting your initial value uh, with these names all separated by tabs. So let's look at the uh, action event handler for the connect button not too much code here. Uh, before we look at the code though, well, there's two properties we're going to want to add. Uh, so that we can access the, uh, the MySQL database uh, throughout the window, uh, we're going to create a public, uh, a private property on the window called MDB as MySQL Community Server. That's the, uh, the database class that's used to connect to MySQL. Also going to create M is connected as Boolean and that'll track whether we're connected to the server or not. So the first thing you want to do is create an instance of MySQL Community Server and then set its properties. Uh, because we installed MySQL on this same machine that I'm using here for the demonstration, uh, the host is 127.0.0.1. Uh, if you're using a, a server elsewhere, any organization or on the internet, you can put the actual IP address here or you can put its domain name or whatever works. Uh, the username by default is root and the password is whatever you gave it for the password when you installed um, MySQL. And the database name we're going to be using is the test database. We now call the connect method and if it returns true then we successfully connected so we can set the property M is connected to true and update the status label to say that we connected to MySQL. If there was a problem we'll not set connected to true, we'll set it to false and we'll display the error message. So I'm going to run this. And we click the connect button and you can see it says it connected. So let's move on to step two, create the team table. I'll double click on the button to get to the action event here. And uh, this particular code is simply going to run the SQL to create the table the team table on the on the test database. So the SQL 
as you can see is right here scrolls off a little bit but essentially that it's using the SQL syntax create table and then team is the name of the table and then in parentheses you specify uh, the columns and their data types so ID is an integer and it has these extra keywords after it not null which means it always has to have a value and that it's gonna be an auto increment primary key so each time you add a row to the table uh, this value will increase usually by one and then the other three columns are simply text columns name coach and city the code checks if the database is connected and if it is it calls the SQL or SQL execute method passing in the SQL in the string if there was an error it displays the error message and returns otherwise it displays that the table was created successfully and there's additional checking that displays a message that tells you to connect to the database first if you try to create a table before you've connected so running this you can see the error message if you try to create the table before you connect it to the database so we'll connect and then we'll create the team table and it says team table created successfully and you can verify this by jumping over to the MySQL workbench clicking on test and hitting this refresh oh, where's the refresh button refresh all and then when you expand it you'll see that the team table is in here and you can see its columns are specified let's quit the application go back to real studio and look at our next step which is to add some sample data we're just going to add three rows to keep things simple uh, we'll add three teams called seagulls pigeons and crows each with their own coach name and city uh, this uses a helper method called add team row and it calls it three times and add team row returns true if the row was added successfully false if it was not so after the three calls if they all return true then we display that the three rows are added otherwise we display there was an error taking a look at add team rows down here in the methods first checks if we're connected to the database and then it uses the database record class to add each record or to add the record that was supplied I should say so we create a new instance of it we do not have to supply the ID because that's part of the auto increment primary key and will be created automatically so we specify the values for the name coach and city using the supplied parameters and then we call the insert record method on the database telling it to insert this record this row into the team table and again we check the errors you always want to check for errors and if there was one it gets displayed so let's run connect table already exists so we don't really need to create it again I suspect if we did there'd be an error because it says it already exists now we can add the sample data and it says three rows were added and if we go back to the workbench and do a refresh you can right click and do select rows and it'll issue a command to select the data and you'll see that the data was successfully added to the table let's quit the application and go back to real studio and our final task is to actually show the data much like we saw in the workbench again check if a connection is made delete all rows of the list box before we attempt to add anything create the SQL statement you'll notice it selects star from team and that happens to be the uh, pretty much the same uh, SQL you saw here uh, this one has test prefixed in front of it um, because this is connected to all the databases but our app is only connected to the test database so that we do not need the test prefix uh, so we just have select star from team the data is retrieved into a record set so you do data equals and then you call SQL select supplying the SQL check if the data if the record set is nil and this can happen if there's a typo in your SQL uh, or you use the wrong uh, table name or something like that and then you loop through the record set uh, until it reaches the end of file 
and then you add a row to the list box uh, for each record set that's returned. And in this case, we're adding uh, the first val the first uh, four values that are retrieved, which are the first four columns. Uh, in this case, it would be ID, name, coach, and city. And then we move to the next row, and we repeat this for the three rows, and then close everything down. So running this, we'll connect. We don't need to add the sample data or create the table because we already did that. So we can just click show. And there is the data. Well, I hope you found this quick little example helpful and uh, enjoy creating MySQL applications using Real Studio.